I have had multiple videos that have come out about using ChatGPT for research. And a lot of the comments that I get on them, I feel like a lot of researchers are still not aware of the risks associated with using something like ChatGPT, especially directly using the information it gives you. ChatGPT is a tool that you can use that can make you more efficient in your research, can help you practice better scientific communication and things like that, but it is not a replacement for you as a researcher. So I wanna give you a few examples of mistakes being made by ChatGPT and how that can affect you so that you are aware of what you need to do with ChatGPT generated content. So one example, I'm gonna to come to a brand new ChatGPT research chat and I'm going to ask it for recent research articles. I've basically asked it for recent research articles in the topic of steroid analysis by IA mobility specifically focused on group one metal adduction. And it's given me several different articles that if you just look at it, like they look highly relevant to what I'm asking it for. But what I wanna do is actually search for these articles using Google Scholar. So when I search for this article, you see that this exact title does not appear. It doesn't even appear on the first page of Google Scholar. So, me having been in this research field, having published in this research field around the same time that these papers were coming out, I don't recognize any of these names. And I definitely know that there were only about one, maybe two papers that even use group one metal adduction in the title when I was publishing in it. And those are my actual papers. So the fact that there are this many saying they're coming out around the same time is first of all, a red flag for me because I know this field. But if you're someone who doesn't even know this research field and you're just trying to get started, especially if you didn't ask it this specific question, if you just asked it, give me in-text citations, it could actually give you the wrong, like papers that don't even exist. And so you never want to just take something from ChatGPT, copy and paste it and submit it to journals, submit it for papers, or even put it into presentations. There is a possibility, and this is a known problem, that some of the citations that ChatGPT gives do not exist. So always make sure whenever you are dealing with ChatGPT generated content, that you are actually double checking all of the sources, one, to make sure they're real, and two, to make sure that it's actually understanding the material correctly. And, Anyways, you really should never be trying to copy and paste even if you validated the information is correct. ChatGPT is a starting point to give you some information to very quickly boil things down for you, but in research, you should be broadening out your field, which means ChatGPT cannot replace you because it is always going off of what's been previously done. Along with that, and I don't know if I can give you a specific prompt as an example, but ChatGPT also gives incorrect information sometimes. This is a known problem, even if you just go to start a new chat. It does say that the limitations is that it may occasionally generate incorrect information. So this is actually true. I have searched certain things in the past where it does actually give me just complete like incorrect information. It's not even valid information. Again, if you're someone in a research field who's been in it for a really long time, you're gonna catch those errors. If you're someone who's just getting started, maybe struggling with your research field a little bit, first, download my 30 day research jumpstart guide. It's gonna help you actually learn your field through much more of a systematic and more accurate way than ChatGPT. But second of all, you're not gonna necessarily catch the errors of ChatGPT. So the second major limitation to ChatGPT, and you can see it is again under this limitation section, it has limited knowledge of world and events after 2021. So it's never gonna recommend you a recent research article for the fact that we're now in 2023. It's not going to give you the most up-to-date information. Even if you asked it if a question was novel, it doesn't know if that paper was published in 2022. So you can't just let ChatGPT replace you. This is the reason why even though tools like ChatGPT exist, it doesn't really make the overall research process that much easier. It does allow you to become a little bit more efficient and uplevel your game, but it's not necessarily going to replace you or let you be able to do research projects 
in a matter of minutes or even days. Like you still are going to have to do a lot of work is ChatGPT is not capable of all of these things and neither is any AI system that I have used thus far. They're not all 100% accurate. They all have to be double checked and almost all of them can't understand what a novel research topic is and actually tell you if it's novel or not. So if ChatGPT is inaccurate, if it gives incorrect scientific information, and if it's not even up to date, how can it really help you as a researcher? So that is a question I addressed a lot in this video. I will link down below on just how to use ChatGPT for scientific research and even how to use it for scientific writing. But in general, it is a language model. So it's really helpful in being able to explain concepts very quickly. So if I just came in here and said, can you explain how steroids work? It's gonna give me information on, in general, how steroids work in generally a very simplistic way where reading other people's scientific writing might be super complicated and not as easy to understand. So you can see that it's going through and just explaining kind of how that works. Another way to use ChatGPT that a lot of people aren't talking about is to actually help you to make your scientific communication more accessible. So just like I said before, where sometimes it's harder to understand topics when you're just reading a research paper because scientists tend to speak in a lot of acronyms and things like that, you can use something like ChatGPT to have it kind of dumb it down or simplify the information for you to make it easier for you to learn that field. But you can also ask it to do that with your own writing. So one example is I took a paragraph from one of my research papers and I simply asked it, can you make this results paragraph easier to understand while still allowing it to fit? And what it did is it kind of simplified it down and made it a little bit easier for someone else to understand what I'm saying and not make it as complicated. Now, obviously I would take pieces of this and figure out where I think it's most complicated because you can see I have my figure notations in here as well. I would need to combine these paragraphs together to be able to do that. So again, ChatGPT as a language model can really help you in being able to make things more efficient and to give examples when you're not really sure how to phrase something or how to come up with certain ideas, but it should never be used as a replacement for your own research capabilities, your own reading of research articles, or even focusing on things that it's going to miss because it's never done the research you're actually trying to do. If you want to check out the two videos I already have where I go a lot more in depth on how you can use ChatGPT and other cautions that you may need to have, I will leave these linked up here. If this video was helpful, please like it and subscribe to this channel for more ways to become more efficient in your research, and I hope to see you in the next video.